I have a stepdaughter, Evie, 18, and two biological daughters, Zoe, 23, and Laura, 29. My parents don't believe in divorce, and they refuse to acknowledge how aggressive my ex was. So they've never accepted my late wife or Evie, and I know that's not going to change. While my relationship with them is difficult, they do love my biological children. My parents are always happy to help them financially and paid for their educations. They did treat Evie well because I wouldn't have anything to do with them otherwise, but they refuse any actual support. I fortunately have enough savings to help pay for Evie's college the way theirs was. The problem is that when they heard, my biological daughters asked for me to spend on them too. They think it's unfair for me to spend so much on my stepdaughter and not on them, even though they got support from my parents. I think they're being ridiculous and greedy here. While they're claiming I always favor Evie, but Evie has no one but me while they had my parents. It's not the same. I do think they should be treated fairly, but in this case, that's not equal. Laura and I had a pretty big fight over it, with her claiming I don't love them and should care about them more, that I'm being unfair, while I obviously think she's being unreasonable here. My parents are pissed, but I don't care what they think. It's just frustrating how pissed off my daughters are, though. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. And you are a good parent to Evie for making sure she's getting the same educational opportunities as your daughters, who, I'm sorry, are coming off as very greedy and ungrateful, and they are of the age to be able to recognize the differences in their situations without guilting you. Equity doesn't mean equal. It means being able to give Evie what she needs in order to have the same opportunities as her sisters did. I can't understand why your parents are pissed that they raised a decent man who is a loving stepdad, but that's entirely on them, not you. Not the a-hole. You're making sure all three of your kids have the ability to seek higher education. Honestly, I'm betting that most of this is coming from the grandparents. Not the a-hole. As long as treatment is equal at the end of the day, it doesn't matter that you personally didn't spend the money. Also, what do your daughters expect you to do? Produce money you don't have? Not pay for Evie? So, my brothers, 27 male and 22 male, and I, 26 male, live together in an apartment for which all three of us are paying the mortgage and insurance, and our dad paid the down payment. My 22 male brother, who I'll call Max, was told recently that he got his ex, who just popped up a month after their nasty breakup, was pregnant with allegedly his child. She asked to move in with us since her landlord increased her rent, and it was somehow getting harder for her to afford food. Apparently, her car has been having engine problems too, and the alarm has been going off at random times. We were instantly suspicious, so I told her directly that she should take an NIPP, non-invasive parental paternity, test paid for by us, which is just a blood test from the mother and alleged father, so that we could know for sure that she's right. These tend to cost above $1,000, but I found a location around 40 minutes away that does them more affordably. But she said that she's been suffering from chronic nausea on car trips because of the pregnancy, and she's also deathly afraid of needles. Max says we should take her in anyway, because he doesn't want his child to suffer, in case it is his. The most frustrating thing about Max is that he is too nice and lenient to those who would hurt him deeply. All it takes is a simple apology from someone, and he'll forgive and forget literally anything they ever did to him. This might make him a good member of society, but it's certainly not good for him, and it has been a source of frustration for us. Our dad keeps telling us to look after our brother and to keep him in check so he doesn't get back together with his ex. We don't really mind another person living with us, but at the end of the day, this is about our brother. She's a snake that hurt him deeply and is asking us to do her a major favor without suffering a minor inconvenience for his sake. Of course, the more likely possibility is she's taking advantage of my brother's kind and forgiving nature to take care of her for the next six to seven months, after which it'll turn out that he's not the father and she'll say, whoops, sorry about that, and leave. Or even worse, not leave and make us have to evict her. So if she wants our support, she can suffer the 40-minute car ride in the blood test. If she can't do that, tough break, she's on her own. Not the a-hole. Good luck being afraid of needles and pregnant. She'll have to get over that real quick. Not the a-hole. Even if his ex was willing to take the DNA test and prove it's his child, you wouldn't be the a-hole for not wanting her to move in. You signed up for living with your two brothers, not his ex and a baby. You've proposed a reasonable compromise. If your brother wants to support her anyway, then he can find his own place to live. It's great to look out for younger siblings, but he's an adult and is responsible for his own choices. Not the a-hole. This is an extremely reasonable request. 
I think paranoid husbands who want their wives to take paternity tests when there is no particular suspicion of cheating are out of line. But an ex who broke up nasty a month before is a different story. My husband works at Walmart with a girl around our age who has two kids, but she isn't in a relationship with either of their fathers. I've had an issue with their friendship for a while, as he's jumped through hoops trying to hide their conversations from me, and when I asked him to stop, I'd catch him a while later deleting regular texts, using Messenger secret chats, or just sending photo snaps as responses to each other. I told him he had to drop her out of respect for me, but he would just offer to make things more visible to me and then go back to hiding it. This was a cycle for a while. He swore up and down nothing was going on, but he had to hide it because no matter what he does, I get angry. I was also deeply asleep one day, and he secretly met her with our kids at a park. I only found out because I saw in his statement that his card was charged in the town she lives in. This definitely upset me, and we got into a heated argument over it. But he says our daughter has no kids around her age to play with, and this is the only friend he has with a child. That our daughter deserves to have fun, and he again couldn't tell me because he knew I'd overreact. I got over this, but I did message her and tell her that I have boundaries that I'd like them to be respected, and that I was fine with them being friends so long as stuff wasn't being hidden from me anymore. And she told me she would tell me anything I'd like to know, that I just had to ask because men can be stupid. She also showed up to my daughter's birthday party because he invited her without asking me first. My husband did admit that he would probably get with her if we ended up splitting one night when I asked him honestly. This made me a million times more uncomfortable with their relationship, but it continued. I've tried to be your friend and make it to where we could all hang out so he could be happy, like he wanted. But I don't like doing it, and I feel like I'm being a loser. I also feel like we're just fake friends, so she can continue talking to him and make me feel guilty for trying to have him cut her off completely when it's brought up. She admires him for staying with me so long, because she was abandoned by both of her baby daddies, and being here for our two daughters. She also had him do some baby cares for her newborn son that I was uncomfortable with, like feeding him and changing his diapers. I once opened a message from her to him and left her on red, only for her to freak out and start replying with things like, tell me you never loved me, tell me you never cared about me and want me to die, anything is better than the silent treatment, please. She was being extremely dramatic and I don't find this behavior typical of just friends. He says that she is one of those people who says she loves everyone and it's not like that, she's just weird. She also messaged me to apologize and say that he has no obligation to respond to her, and she gets how that comes off, but she didn't mean it like that. He told me he could never be with her because he doesn't want to assume responsibility of her two boys, so I have nothing to worry about. Anyway, it's Mother's Day, and apparently the manager at their store was making fun of her for not getting any Mother's Day gifts, but I'm skeptical of this being true, because it's an odd thing to pick on someone over. Both of her baby daddies aren't good people and obviously wouldn't get her anything. My husband, saying that she was holding back tears, felt bad for her and apparently bought her a stuffed animal. I told him I didn't like him giving her any gifts and it set me off. I argued with him and told him I can't stay with him if he keeps disrespecting me. It isn't his job to make her feel better and replace gifts someone else should be giving her. He told me that I am ungrateful and that he can gift anyone he wants to, that I'm being controlling and won't allow him to have a friend. I'm wondering if I'm being wrong for how I reacted, and what should I do? I don't know how to handle this all, and it's really hurting my feelings. His relationship with her is putting a strain on our marriage, but he insists on trying to make both work. Stop pretending this might not be cheating. It's cheating. He doesn't have to be physical. It's bad. No more middle ground. He's in with you, or he's out. OP, he is cheating on you. He won't change, and he doesn't care. Time to dump him and move on. Your husband is having an affair. I would set an ultimatum. Either he completely cuts her off and goes no contact with her, or our marriage would be over, and the two steaming piles of garbage can be together. For context, I, 20 female, have been friends with a girl who I'll call Kate for this, who is 19 female, for two years. We aren't incredibly close by any means. We met through mutual friends and just kind of started talking. She seemed really cool, and we shared a lot of interests and morals, or so I thought. I would openly express my distaste for cheaters and people who thought it was okay to be romantically involved with people who are married. It was recently she had started talking about a guy she was seeing. Initially, me and the other girls were happy for her, 
and we were all super supportive of this relationship because we didn't know the details of how they met. And she would always avoid the questions and say that how they met didn't matter, which I found kind of odd but ignored it. A couple of days ago, she happily announced that they were engaged and getting married soon. It was then that it came out how they met. One of the other girls in our group asked again how they got together, and she started explaining that they met through some friends and clicked right away. She started seeing him, climbing through his window to see him. I figured she was doing so because of his parents or roommates. She explained then that one night, she made too much noise and the guy's wife entered the room and caught them. I went silent as she explained that the guy also had kids, but chose her because it was true love. After the story, I spoke up, telling her that I didn't feel comfortable attending a wedding when I knew she was the reason some children lost their father. Her and the rest of the girls started to chew me out, telling me that I was a huge a-hole for not supporting my friend and her fiancé. I once again told her that I will in no way help her celebrate when she was the reason a mother and her children lost not just a husband, but also a father. I was told I was a horrible friend and an a-hole. I promptly left the group call and removed myself from the group chat I was in to help plan the wedding. I got messages from all the girls in the group, including the bride-to-be, telling me that I should reconsider because they just don't think her taking a father away from his children is a big deal. I haven't spoken to any of them for the past few hours. They keep telling me that he made his choice and I shouldn't feel bad, but I can't help but feel that I would be an a-hole for helping them celebrate something when I know that he left a family behind, but I also feel like an a-hole because I'm refusing to go to the wedding because of my own moral standing. But I just don't feel right about it. If I quietly attend the wedding, seeing this girl and this guy happily saying their I do's, knowing that this man had a family that he abandoned, no matter how I spin it, it feels wrong. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Tell your friend you will go to her second wedding. The cheater is going to cheat on her too. Not the a-hole but your friend group is. Those are definitely the type of women to not trust around your significant other. Birds of a feather flock together. Not the a-hole. Cheating is terrible. Climbing into a window to duck a guy whose wife is home is wild. This guy is regretting having a family and responsibilities and is running away with a teenager. This is whack. I'm 16 female. My mom married my stepfather about three years ago. He has a daughter, Emma, 17 female. I've been incessantly picked on by Emma and her side of the family. Small town, everyone knows each other because of my mixed ethnicity background and that my dad's side are not wealthy. My dad passed away when I was a lot younger, so Emma and I do not get along at all. This family heirloom, a bracelet, has been in Emma's mother's side of the family for five or six generations and has been passed down from mother to first daughter. It's not valuable financially. It's made of gold and has no precious stones. The value is mostly sentimental. Emma was not in line to receive this, as she has an older sister, Ava. There have been tensions between Emma and her mom because Emma believed she should get this heirloom, because Ava has problems, and Emma believed Ava would not take good care of this. However, in the end, their mom gave it to Ava. A couple of weeks ago, Ava pawned the bracelet at a pawn shop, which my friend works there. He noticed Ava pawned a bracelet and knew about the bracelet, so he gave me a call and told me what happened. I went there and bought it for myself. I didn't tell anyone and am keeping it at my uncle's house with my cousin. Once Emma learned the bracelet has been pawned, she went there to buy it, but as I had already bought it, they came back empty-handed, and Emma has been complaining about this, and Ava, non-stop. She does not know that I have it. I can end it by telling her that I have it and offer to give or sell it to her but I'm keeping it for myself because why not? It's mine as I've purchased it legitimately. She's been bad to me and I don't need to do her a favor. Am I the a-hole? Everyone sucks here. They suck by being R to you. It's unacceptable. They are always a-holes. You know very well what you're doing. You're using it as an opportunity to get back at your stepsister and you enjoy seeing her in despair. This is not acceptable either. Offer to sell, not give it back to them, at a good profit. Everyone will be happy. Everyone sucks here. So, let me get this straight. You bought the bracelet, not because you liked it or wanted to wear it at any point. You only bought it so Emma couldn't get it. This is to punish her for how she's treated you, yeah? That's a spiteful thing to do. You're not better than she is then. And in a small town where everyone knows everything, chances are she will learn about this. Kind of sounds like you want her to know, though to get every ounce of satisfaction from hurting her back. Not the a-hole. 
Your stepsister and her family have been picking on you and been horrible to you for three years. And your mom doesn't stand up for you because she doesn't want to upset her husband. You're pretty much powerless in this situation. You found a way to get some well-deserved revenge. I say good for you. Keep the bracelet and do whatever you want with it. Don't be fooled into thinking that Emma or her family will suddenly treat you better if you give or sell it back.